Good morning, folks. I'm Pastor Keomo Butler. This is Restoration Victory Ministries. Hope all is well with everyone, man. Before we go any farther, before we even start this morning, let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name, giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We ask, Father, that you will go forth, that the Holy Spirit of God will illuminate our spirits. It will be all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, listen, I am so extremely excited about this unequally yoked part two teaching that the Holy Spirit of God is going to give me to speak. Um, a couple of years back on the television show that I had on uh, WATC in Atlanta, I teached a lesson called Unequally Yoked, and it was my most popular teaching. Um, that particular lesson <laughs> by itself, um, I had more views on that particular lesson than I have had on all my different teachings together. So that is a very popular teaching, and it was popular then. It, it needed to be heard then. It needs to be heard now. But it needs to be heard now with a little more wisdom and also with a little more time to teach it to you. Um, back then, while I was in the middle of my message, because on television you have a certain time, it cut off. And I didn't get to finish. So what the Holy Spirit of God is leading me to do now is to teach this teaching in its full entirety. Now, I'm not ready today. Well, I'm ready. Um, but scripturally, I need to do some more praying, some more reading, some more studying. And when the Holy Spirit of God gives me utterance, then I'll be ready to teach this lesson to you guys. I just want to give a quick preview today. A quick, I guess, something for us to think about. A little nugget for us to meditate on until we meet again. Listen, beloved, without a shadow of a doubt, this is the most important thing for us to understand as Christians, now already Christians, already established, already believing, already following God. This is not a foundational teaching of becoming a Christian. This is not even the teaching of being a good Christian or following the fruits of the spirit completely or living holy completely or being at a place in your Christianity where you are, you know, like the, the sermon or the, the, the series that I just finished teaching, let me slow down a little bit. The series that I just finished teaching, Holy Spirit Minded, this is not even so much about becoming fully Holy Spirit Minded and fully committed and living your life for God, which is absolutely important. But I truly believe through the Holy Spirit of God that if we don't have this foundation, we can't fully live Holy Spirit Minded because if we don't have this foundation, we will not cancel out or we will not close our ears to the distractions. If we don't fully, fully understand this unequally yoked teaching and what the Bible says, then the distractions and the noise from the world will suck the Holy Spirit out of us and we will be in constant battle trying to figure out why things aren't working out the way they're supposed to. Just, again, this is not the teaching today, and so I don't want to get... Now, I will say this. Um, I've been trying to keep my messages to 20, 25, 30, 35 minutes, if I can, because, you know, sometimes a little bit shorter is better. It's easier to digest things in small pieces. But this particular teaching, when the Holy Spirit of God does release me and give me utterance to teach it, it is going to be a longer teaching because this particular teaching needs 40 minutes to an hour because it has to be understood. I am going to go through history. I'm going to teach you who said it, why they said it, what was going on in the time and the place that they said it so we can get a full understanding. Line upon line, precept upon precept so that we can walk away understanding because there's so many times we can teach things and preach things, but if you don't understand the context of the text that was written, then you don't really get a full understanding and then you walk away confused. I know I have in a lot of cases because I didn't know, because I hadn't done the studying and the reading and because God has anointed me as a prophet, as a voice that speaks led by the Holy Spirit of God. I'm going to break it down so that when you finish watching this whole unequally yoked part two that we're going to teach in the next couple of days, whenever the Holy Spirit tells me to teach it, whenever he's finished with me, so I can properly deliver it to you. You're going to understand at the end of it, everything. And then it'll just be at that point, time for you to make a decision. 
The Bible says in the book of Matthew 10, chapter, Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace upon the world, but a sword. He said, because a man will be set against his father, a woman will be set against her daughter, father-in-laws and mother-in-laws will be set against son-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. He said he will set those in their own home against each other. He said that he who is not willing to deny the world, take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And I'm going to explain that scripture, but I'm just putting that out there so we can get an understanding. The Bible says, and again, I don't want to get into this, this teaching because, you know, it, you, you guys who know me know once I start talking, it's all over. But the Bible says, who is a liar, but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ. He is an antichrist that does not acknowledge the father and the son. The Bible also says in the book of uh, Second John, I mean, First John again, believe not every spirit, but test the spirit, whether or not they are of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus is the Christ is of, of God. Every, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is Christ is not of God, but is of the Antichrist, which you have told was coming and is now already in this world. The Bible says, but be of good cheer, for you have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have overcome them, for the spirit of God is in you. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, for the spirit of God dwells within you. What you have from God, you are not your own. You've been bought with a price. So glorify God with your whole body and your whole spirit, which belongs to him. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, for the spirit of God dwells within you. If any man does not have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So just putting this out there. So if any man does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not of Christ. He doesn't belong to God. He's not a child of God. He's not an heir of God. He's not a joint heir with Jesus Christ. He's the spirit of the Antichrist. And we are not supposed to be unequally yoked together with them. And I'm going to explain. I'm going to break it down so you'll know exactly what unequally yoked mean. The biblical understanding of what that word means. But again, just... Remember what Jesus said, I have not come to bring peace. A man will be separated against his father, a mother against her daughter, in-laws against their in-laws. That's big. If you're not willing to deny the world, take up your cross and follow Jesus, then you are not worthy of Jesus. And we, we're going to have to understand, and I don't want to get into this now. Okay, Holy Spirit, I'm not going to get into this now. I just will say this. When you understand, and, and when we're taught, and we talk about this together, the history, the culture, the time, the land, what was going on in the land when Jesus came. Because remember, Christianity wasn't the popular religion or the most powerful religion or the biggest religion as it is now. Christianity wasn't worldwide spread. Christianity was the underdog. Christianity was the new thing. Christianity was the occultic religion that was just being started in these new paganistic land and paganistic societies. So this stuff that we're going to talk about is stuff that's being sent back or wrote back or letters that are being sent to very small percentages of the masses. So people, husband and wives, were separated because one was a believer and one wasn't. Children and, and parents were separated because one was a believer and one wasn't. Friends, people that you used to be part of that paganistic society with, if you grew up in that society, you were part of that, whatever was going on. And now you've changed. Now you're a totally different person. Now you're living your life totally differently. Now you have a total different belief value because Jesus is on the inside of you. So th that's going to cause issues with you and with the people around you. And just as it was then, it is today. Just understand this, that you are Jesus. The spirit of God is on the inside of you. There's only two spirits on this earth, the spirit of light, the spirit of darkness. No matter how it's advertised, no matter how it's sugar-coated, no matter what name it's given, I like to peel the onion back and just get to the nitty-gritty. The nitty-gritty is the spirit of light, spirit of darkness. If you're a part of the spirit of light, you're a child of God, you're an heir of God, you're a joint heir with Jesus Christ, 
you believe in Jesus Christ. The spirit of God is on the inside of you. You are the spirit of God in the spirit realm. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're the spirit of the Antichrist. On whatever level, on whatever, whatever verbiage you want to use, whatever you call it, whatever you say it is, whatever you've told yourself, it means however you look at it, if you don't accept Jesus Christ, you are the spirit of the Antichrist. I don't care. Buddhist, whatever it is, how sweet and how nice and how earthful and how loving you're supposed to be if you have not accepted Jesus Christ. According to this word, and Christians, we live by this word. We live by, it's no way that as a Christian you can say you believe in Jesus Christ, you accept Jesus based upon the word, you believe in your heart, you confess in your mouth the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ based upon the word, but yet you decided that you're not going to live by the word in certain areas. This just doesn't work. And we're going to go through this. And again, you know, I've given you so much this week. I've, I've taught so many lessons this week. I want to give you guys time to digest it all, catch up. Because what we taught, believe, trust, and believe, that is mandatory the foundation. But you can have that. But if you don't have this foundation, the first part of believe, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if you don't have that, if you don't know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which you have in you, if you're not ashamed and you don't know and understand what it means to not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of God, if you don't have that in you and that's not rooted in you to where your life now is a reflection of that and you do not and will not play with anyone that tries to challenge Jesus Christ because essentially what they're doing is challenging you because essentially what's happening is the spirit of the Antichrist that is in them, the spirit of God that is in you, it's a battle. Somebody going to win. Are you going to let them win or are you going to win? I mean, are you going to stand for you and for what you believe? Or are you going to stand for what they feel and what they believe? Because at the end, at the end of the day, that's what it is. We can sugarcoat it and call it what it is, but that's what it is. Either you win or you lose in this spiritual thing. Beloved, it's that important. Now listen, I'm just going to say this and I'll close. because This is a preview. <laughs> I don't want this to be a teaching. The Bible does say that if any believing man or woman has a non-believing husband or wife that wants to stay with them, that doesn't want to leave them, then that believing man or woman has to stay with that believing husband or wife. That is biblical. I agree 100% with that. But as a believing man or woman, you are not supposed to cower or bow down or quench or grieve or put in the closet, or allow to be overshadowed the Spirit of God in you in no way, shape, or form. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So if you are a Christian, like he said, like Jesus said, said a mother against father, son against daughter, husband against wife. So if you are the Christian in this particular scenario, and you have close friends, family members, husband and wives who aren't Christians and don't believe, and they want to stay in this relationship with you, great, praise God, because the spirit of God that is in you is greater than the spirit that is in them. But you have to make sure that they understand that. You have to be willing to lose whatever the world has for you to gain what Jesus had. Beloved, it would be terrible. It would be insane for any one of us to get to judgment and Jesus say, you really didn't believe. You really didn't honor. Son, daughter, you really didn't love me. And then you say, how, you know, like the Bible said, how did I not love you? I did all these great things in your name. I've been a Christian all my life. And Jesus said, but you were unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And look, on this date, you, you allowed your spirit to be quenched. On this date, you didn't stand up for me. On this date, you didn't do this. On this date, you didn't do that. Because what the devil does is, praise God. I'm going to say this. I got to close now. I promise you I got to close. What the devil does is the devil will take the word and he'll take your flesh He'll take your flesh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, prize of life. Your fleshly desires, your love, affection, all that, that's fleshly. And he'll take that flesh. And because you want to be in relationship with certain people, places, situations, you won't allow the spirit of God in you to shine. And then you allow their spirit. Because what happens is if their spirit, the spirit of the Antichrist, overtakes your spirit, the spirit of God, they're winning. 
Beloved, they're winning. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you're there, hey, I'm a Christian. This is what I stand for. Love it or leave it. This is what I stand for. If you don't love me, if you don't want to love Jesus Christ, if you don't want to be with Jesus Christ, if it bothers you, then I'm sorry. God bless you. I don't know what else to tell you. And you go and you pray for them. You ask God for forgiveness for them. You ask God for grace and strength for you to be who you are. But you continue to be a man or woman of God. That is what the Bible expects. But the Bible does not expect you because you're in a relationship. Now, this, this relationship, this situation, this friendship, this job, whatever it is, has you going against Jesus, has you going against who you are, has you, have you going against what you stand for. And beloved, just as the devil did it, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, prize of life. He, he, the devil hit Jesus right after Jesus was fasting, right before his ministry. Twisting the word, changing the word to try to make the word say what he wanted to say so that Jesus will go against the will of God. Same thing is going to happen today. The spirit of the Antichrist in anyone, and I'm speaking specifically on the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist in anyone, they're going to try as best as they can to manipulate, to twist, to con, to overshadow, to make you ease, to make you soften, to make you doubt who you are in Christ Jesus. And when you do that, when you start doubting, when you start allowing all it, because it's, it's going to happen. The more you allow it around you and the more you're cool with it, the more you agree with it. And again, praise God. I, I don't want to start teaching. Listen, I promise you I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. And what we're going to do next time, instead of me doing it the way I normally do, just talking to you like this, because I'm, praise God, because I, I have the word in me, not all of the word, but I have enough word in me to be able to minister this way. I am going to go line upon line. I'm going to put on my readers. Yeah, no, I don't have to put on readers. I hope I don't have to put on readers, <laughs> but I'm going to put on, we're going to read it line upon line. And we're going to see what the word says. I'm going to read it to you. Then I'm going to explain it to you. Then I'm going to expunge on it. Then I'm going to teach it in my way. We're going to do it every way possible to make sure that everyone understands what's going on. Because listen, the time that we're in, the time that we're going into, the Antichrist is already in the world, but it's about to become real. And some of us are going to have to make very, very definitive decisions to be involved, to not be involved, to like, to not like, to honor, to not honor, to be equally yoked or unequally yoked. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they are in agreement? <laughs> All in water don't mix. Light and darkness don't mix. Christ and the Antichrist don't mix. As I said before, the devil and the angel Gabriel, the angel Michael, and the spirits of the enemy, and the spirits of the wicked one, and the spirits of God, they're not up in, in the spirit world chilling and kicking and shaking hands and eating together. No, they are in war. It's a warfare. And that's the, we have to have that mind frame to understand what we need to do. How, again, the Bible says, be of the world, but not in the world. Or actually be in the world, but not of the world. I twisted it up. I'm sorry. Be in the world, but not of the world. So you can, nobody said that you got to leave this world. They ain't saying no crazy stuff like that. But I'm saying that while you're in this world, you need to have one. When people see you, they need to see the biggest Jesus Christ light shining. When you're in the midst of the Antichrist, the light should be blinking on you so much. You know how it is if you're in a room, if you're in a dark room, and then somebody puts a red light and it's just blanks in your eye constantly, constantly. That's what that. That's what you need to do. But your, your light needs to be green for Jesus. Blanking, blanking, agitating them to death, bothering them to death, worrying them to death. They're not going to want to be around you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to hate on you. They're going to drag your name through the dirt. They're going to do everything that they can do because they are of the world. The world will hear it them. They're not of God. He who is of God heareth us. He who is not of God heareth us not. And this is how you will know the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. He who of God heareth us, he who is not of God heareth us not. And by this you will know the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. By this you will know the spirit of righteousness and the spirit of the Antichrist. We are not to be yoked equally together, together with the Antichrist. Now this was a preview. This was 10-15 minutes. The, the lesson, but we're going to have some fun because 
you know, it's going to be a little comedy, it's going to be a little humor. But I want us to just get ready, get our minds and our hearts ready because it's going to be shots fired. It's going to be some things that's going to be said that may offend some. There's going to be some things that's going to be said that some may not agree with, which is why I'm going to read it line upon line, precept upon precept from the word, explaining what the word is meaning based upon history, culture, civilization at that time. So we can get a full understanding so that then we have to make a decision. And then knowing that that decision that you make is a decision that's between you and God because God knows the secrets of every man's heart and he judges you according to the secrets of your heart. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So if you believe in your heart, truly believe in your heart, and you know that Jesus Christ, Christ dwells on the inside of you, the Spirit of God is on the inside of you, then you don't want to have no, you don't want to have no dealings with the Antichrist. Miss me with that. You know, you don't have no friendship. You don't want to have any kind of relationship that's going to separate you because in the end, what the Antichrist does, his job is to kill, steal, and destroy the Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God that is on the inside of you. His job is to separate you from the kingdom. If you allow him to do that, then that means that you have made a conscious decision to allow this to happen. I would rather be, praise God, this is not an attack on anyone, but I would rather be 100% alone and 100% right with Jesus Christ than 100% right with the world and 100% wrong with Jesus. Think about that. I would rather be 100% alone and 100% right with Jesus than be 100% right with the world and be 100% wrong with Jesus. The Bible says that what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Beloved, I look forward to talking to you guys again in depth. I pray that you have a great day. I love you in Jesus Christ. Hope this preview was a blessing to you. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. God bless. Bye-bye.